<laughs> Hello, folks. This is Alan doing another comprehensive best out of one Throne of Eldraine draft. Let's begin. All right, so what do we have as our pick one, pack one? Um, pretty interesting card. Fail Wishes is pretty good. Um, I don't think the card's busted by any means. A two mana, one four wall in the early game is pretty nice. Um, the Sorcerer Adventure ability allows us to prioritize what we want in our sideboard. Um, I think this card is pretty good. I don't think it's busted or broken by any chance. Like, it's a nice card to block in the early game. You can discard two cards, you know, get something from your sideboard, and then the next turn, um, let's just say, for example, the opponent wants to remove this off the battlefield, you can just bounce this back to your hand if you have two man up, get a card from your sideboard, and end up drawing your card and just replaying this again the turn after and still having enough to bounce back. So it's a pretty solid defensive body in the early game. Um, the Sorcery Adventure is the part you really want to cast for the most part. Um, the fact that you can keep bouncing back Fisher fail wishes and searching up something useful on the sideboard is definitely um, interesting. So yeah, I think this is good. I don't think it's busted. I don't think it's broken. I don't think it's game winning or anything. Uh, pretty solid card. And what else do we have for on our, for on our commons, we have Ember of Shieldbreaker, which is, I think, is a pretty good knight in the red aggressive deck. The reason why I say it's good, because the sorcery adventure part of it um, is quite relevant in this arc in this limited format. There's a lot of arc artifacts running around, and sometimes you can get a nice two for one, being able to destroy a target artifact and then casting a 2-1 body to either attack or defend with is pretty nice. Um, our double color card, Fireborn Knight, is pretty good. Um, Definitely um, um, a nice a card that you want to go dual color with. Same with Inspiring Veteran. If only these two weren't in the same pack, my God, it would be it'd be so cool if um, both of these would wheel. But yours never guarantee. Um, look at our commons. There's Reef Soul, which is great. Um, definitely a Saw removal spell, and maybe then there's a Trebuchet. If I'm going heavy knights, this can the damage can really add up from this. So, looking at this pack, I guess there's only really five cards I'm looking at. Um, so, I mean, I really don't want to start with any double color or aggressive. I just want to stay flexible. Really, choice is just between Fae of Wishes and the Reeve Soul. Like, Fae of Wishes is a nice wall, don't get me wrong. Uh, the sorcery part of it is quite expensive um, for four mana. You can find a nice, you know, um, non-creature card from outside from outside the game, I mean, at your sideboard, but really, it's, I don't really think it's that game-breaking, like, I mean, 4-mana is a lot, this is sorcery speed, um, you are, for the most part, just, um, finding, just exchanging, a, you know, ex you know, getting a nice, easy 2-for-1, for the most part, using the sorcery part of 4-mana to find a card, and then playing a 1-for body, which is a decent blocker. The 1-for body's nice, you know, it can block air and, you know, ground creatures, but really, I mean, you can pretty much do that with any other 2-drop in a game, like maybe in the early game, they tend to not have flyers, so, I mean, like, even a Merfolk Secret Keeper, a Corridor Monitor, etc. can usually block. So, I don't think this card is that impressive. <laughs> I don't think it's amazing by any means. Um, I mean, bouncing this back is fine, but you're also discarding two cards. But in against a very aggressive opponent with big creatures, this doesn't really do much. I think the card with the most utility here, uh, and that keeps us flexible, is definitely Reef Soul. Black is definitely a strong color in this format, and I think I'm just going to take it here. Alright, and what do we open? Um, a Claim Contender is a solid 2 for 1 if you can get 3 mana 3 3 body. It's not that impressive, it's okay. Um, but the fact that you can probably search out a Knight or maybe a Trapped in a Tower, um, the equipments, um, a lot of the weapons, equipments here in this format aren't that great um, unless it's the uh, red black um, knight equipment. Forgot what the name is, and it can't really search out any artifact cards or creatures. Only legendary artifact cards. So you want to play this card in a heavy knight deck. You know, nice two for one. You know, get a card draw off of it, and nothing too spectacular. Um, what else do we have? Um, there's again that Ember of Shieldbreaker that I just mentioned about. Pretty solid card. You know. Having this in your hand, being able to destroy a target artifact, and then playing a 2-1 seems pretty decent. Um, pretty decent comments here. Flower Fox is pretty nice. If you can get flying, um, 
these black cards can pretty much wield or not amazing by any means. Like I can, I don't mind having one Reaper Knight, one Forever Young, but I don't think these are the early picks. I think the early picks are just between like Ember of Shieldbreaker and Acclaimed Contender. Um, I wouldn't mind trying out the Acclaimed Contender hedge towards Black White Knights. Um, this can be nice sometimes. It can fish if it can fish you back, fish you a nice knight um, or. Um, a trapped in the tower as in fine removal spell in white. Otherwise, Ember of Shieldbreaker would be fine as well. But usually, um, I don't want to keep this card stuck in my hand for the most part. Like it's nice if it can shoot down artifact, but there's some games where you know these you're trying to wait for them to resolve a, an artifact, and then so you can finally use this to kill it and then play a two one. And the late game of two one isn't that significant. So yeah, I think I want to try the acclaim contender here. Looks like a pretty solid, cool card. So I'm just going to take it here. Um, and what's good for Black White Knights? Nothing much. Um, this is a card that you most likely want to play in the red green deck. Um, Shambling Suit is okay if you can get enough going for it. Um, nothing amazing, I don't think, in this pack. Like, um, I don't really have a direction to head towards, to be honest with this. I don't really know what the best card in this pack is, to be honest. Like, if I wanted to move into Blue Black Mill, didn't say please would make sense. Um, I can also just try to Wicked Guardian, why not, if I'm already in black. I think that's a pretty solid 4-drop. Um, it's better off in a less aggressive deck due to the fact that the less aggressive decks in black tend to have higher toughness, and then you can ping a creature and draw a card. Otherwise, there's a Malevin Nova as an okay 2-drop. But this card isn't that great in an aggressive deck too. It's looking to play in more like a black um, green foods card where you can actually sacrifice the foods as um, ways to um, pump this up. But anyways, it's just an okay two drop. Nothing too amazing. Um, just a two drop with an upside. So right now here is just a guess to be honest. Like I don't really know if we're going mill. I don't know if we're going aggro. Um, I mean the Arnvale Paladin is an okay knight. But it's nothing amazing. Um... So yeah, um, yeah, really, I don't really know here. Hmm. Like, I really don't care if I pass up anything in this two in this pack. It's just, it's all pretty much filler. Like, um, like maybe just an Ardenvale Paladin as an okay four drop. But I mean, I'm not a big fan of this card unless there's adamant. Unless we're going heavy white, which we don't know we're gonna get towards. It's a nice knife for a claim contender to fetch up. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna keep myself in black for the moment. Like Wicked Guardian, I can see being played in a lot of black controls, slower control decks. Even Ardenvale Paladin is not a high pick choice for a aggressive knights deck, to be honest. Because knights tend to be aggressive. This is an expensive four drop with um, the stats favored as a more of a defensive body. To which I find really strange for a white card. So yeah, I'm just I think I'm just a speculating on Wicked Guardian here. Keep my options open for black. And now what do we open? Um Injival Innkeeper is great, definitely an excellent uh, uncommon. Can generate a ton of value out of nowhere, as long as you have a bunch of adventures in your deck. Um Drano Lock is uh, a good card if only if you're in blue black. We can probably speculate on as a decent solid removal spell. Otherwise, what is there? There's Barrel Witches with the Acclaimed Contender. That can be a, we can set up a nice black white, a knight stack. But honestly, the best card in this pack has to be Edgewall Innkeeper. Uh, still early in the pack. We can move into green black, green white, uh, whatever uh, whatever cards are supporting adventures as of right now. We can move in that archetype, and uh, Edgewall Innkeeper is definitely solid and um, a card that gains a lot of value over time. So definitely Edgewall Innkeeper here. And what do we pick up? Um, hmm, nothing much. I guess we want to continue the adventures. We have Silver Flame Squire and Lonesome Unicorn to choose from. Um, the Unicorn is not Knight, unfortunately. <clears throat> so Claim Contender does not really look it up. Same with the Silver Flame Squire. <clears throat> we can just grab a food token, perhaps. Maybe just as a way to maybe, um, maybe, maybe, um, guess... That that we're gonna move towards um, green black foods, perhaps. But I mean, again, there's really nothing amazing in this pack that I care about too much. Like, sure, these are adventure creatures, um, but at the same time, Lonesome Unicorn is a five drop until you can get out. Um, Silver Flame Squire is an okay, you know, combat trick. Like sometimes maybe you can tap 
a creature. And then, you know, maybe you can play the 2-1 body as an adventure for Edgewall and Keeper. But overall, I don't think this really matters too much, to be honest. I don't think we're passing up too much. I think I'm going to speculate on a Golden Egg. Since we're in green, this can also help us splash. And, um, you know, just a decent cantrip. Here, anything amazing? Uh, not really, again. Not a big fan of this Lonesome Unicorn. I guess we can just try to take a Mopey 2-drop in Garen Briggs Squire. Festive Funeral is more like a better, a better card that's played in the more late-game um, blue-black mill deck due to the fact that blue-black is constantly casting sorceries in instances where they can end up in the graveyard, while in other archetypes you're looking to preserve creatures, therefore the Festive Funeral isn't that great. Um, still okay, I guess. Um, guess we can take our first Mopey 2-drop in Garen Briggs Squire as a way to block and defend in the early game. Let's try it out. Uh, any other signals? Well, we keep passing up these lonesome unicorns, but again, I don't think they don't synergize with the acclaimed contender. Um, they don't really synergize with the Edgewall Innkeeper that well, unless you get to turn 5. I don't think it's amazing. I think we can just take a Merrily Frider as a decent 2-drop that we can trade off in the early game in green. Other than that, um, I mean, Tone Raiders being passed up is not amazing by any means, so let's just take a Merrily Frider. Like, this still synergizes with a claim contender, which can maybe search it out if we decide to go white green, but we don't know yet. Um, I guess maybe an insatiable appetite as a decent pump trick. I don't hate it. I think this, even without the food synergy, this can be fine. I mean, all that glitters is an enchantment that requires us to build around it a little bit. We can easily get two for one. So, yeah, I think I'm down. Maybe take the insatiable appetite, see where it leads us. Um, and do we just go green blue mill? I don't know. I mean, otherwise, what else? What else is there? Um, maybe we can end up in green red, where a rose lord halberd can be pretty decent. Maybe there's a ginger brute as a food creature that we don't mind. Um, we did pick up a couple of green cards, but that doesn't mean we're in green. I guess these are like only okay green cards and aren't too amazing. Um, yeah, I have no idea, like, I mean, Weapon Rack is okay, not amazing, these tend to wheel. I think I'm going to speculate on Murphal's Secret Keeper, maybe that option is open in Blue Mill. And now I guess we can take a Forever Young. I think that's much more op better than the these other cards, let's just take it. Uh, Return of Nature seems pretty decent here, I guess we can take it. Uh, maybe mill's open, we can just try to didn't say please. Like, we can still be green, blue, mill, believe it or not, or black, blue, mill. Um, like, it's possible to mill in green, black, green, um, blue, because the synergize of an Edgewell Innkeeper, maybe you'll open up a Lucky Clover. We can get that going, but yeah. Um. Alright, so, second pack, where are we looking? Um, I don't know, maybe our, I think our primary color has to be green with the um, Edgewell Innkeeper, um, because every, because all the other... Avenger card synergize it with it too well, but in terms of a second color, we don't really have anything like maybe blue seems open in this pack, so maybe we just go blue green. We could end up blue black, green black with a bunch of food. We didn't pick up any good knights card, but maybe the green white starts going, so we're kind of in four colors right now, um, but I think we can figure our way out of this, so uh, let's move on. Ooh, and what do we open? Well, Stone of Spy Fey is a pretty busted card. If you can get off, and we did pick up some decent blue cards that um, I wouldn't mind heading into. Um, what else is there? Um, in red, there's Scorching Dragonfire. There's an Out Muscle if you want to stay safe in green, which I wouldn't mind. But I think the card has to be stolen by Faye. Maybe we can just move towards blue. Why not? And what do we open this pack? There's a Wander Mare. Hmm. So this is getting a little bit tricky. Do we, do we move into just... We can, this Watermare gives us an option to just move into green-white adventures, but we just took a stolen by the Fae. Um, I mean, what else is there in this pack? There's some okay cards, like there's Searing Barrage, but that's that's in red. We didn't pick up any red cards in the early game. I guess Borkhouse Spider is okay. Maybe a Wolf, another Wolf Rider. Um, maybe Youthful Knight, but those aren't too exciting. Like, we're still open to any color, but the best card in this pack has to be the Watermare. I think I'm just gonna take it here. Like nothing else is too exciting. Like for going fruit is okay. All these are green cards are okay. Um, I think I'm gonna speculate on it. Even though we took stolen by the fate, it's possible that blue might not be open. So let's take it here.
And did we get rewarded? Hmm. Mad Ratter is for blue red card draw, but we didn't pick up any blue. Same with Red Cat Melee um, as a nice red card. There's an Arcanist Owl that we can try to speculate on. Maybe go blue white, perhaps. Um, there's another Youthful Knight, which is okay. Um, Quarter Monitor can be a fine blocker at two. Bro, which is. Um, so, yeah, this draft is just going all over the place, to be honest. Like, I can try to take an Arcanist Owl, like, if I manage to go heavy blue. It's a pretty good card. Um, otherwise, we just give up Stole on the Fey. Maybe lean towards a Youthful Knight for a green-white Knight's Adventures deck, which I don't mind taking. Lots of options here. Hmm. How likely is it that we cast Arkansas? We just have to be heavy blue for the most part. Um, we did take Stolen by a Fey, which I really do want to cast. But this card isn't really a card you want to play in, like, green-blue, for example. Um, yeah, so maybe I'm just going to take the Youthful Knight. Um, or I could just move... I don't think we can move into black at this point, probably. May, might just be too late. Like, I can, it's still possible that I might move into black-blue mill, but no, these cards seem too exciting. Let's take a speculative Youthful Knight. Green white might just be more open, and there's a Charm Sleep if we want to stick with blue. There's also Fairy Guide Mutter if you want to keep the green, green white going. Like right now, I, I, I'm thinking I want to just go with green blue at this point with the Stolen by the Fae as a really powerful card. But like maybe Fairy Guide Mutter is just a better choice to just synergize with the Wander Mare and uh, go green white at this point. So it's just really between these two, to be honest. Like, maybe we just don't go black at all. Like, we didn't see really any great black cards. Like, there's a lot of blue cards that are open, but we don't, we can't really pair it up with another secondary color uh, unless we decide to go green-blue, which I don't mind. <sighs> I don't know. It's hard here. Maybe we just speculate on green-blue. Yeah, I'm down for that. And there's another Charm Sleep. So, yeah, maybe we should just go green-blue at this point. Uh, even though there was a Wander Mare, I don't think it's the choice. Um, I'd rather have played a Stolen by the Fae more than anything else, given that we picked it up. So, yeah, why not? Why not just move towards Green Blue at this point um, with the with the Edgewall Innkeeper? We don't really have a lot of adventures. I guess there's a Merfolk Secret Keeper, I guess, that we can take for the Mill Plan. Like, it's definitely a solid option. Like, I don't hate it. Gives us a nice adventure to go. Uh, we already have one. Um, we can probably go for two of them. Or, but I mean, Green Blue's plan isn't really the mill, to be honest. It's just to you know play lots of big creatures and ramp to those to that point. So maybe I just take the Charm Sleep. Yeah, let's speculate on it. I don't hate it. Now nothing for us. I guess the Garen Break Squire. Yeah, this draft isn't going too well for us. We're just all over the place, to be honest. Uh, maybe green... I mean, I guess green-white was actually the way to go now this shows up. Ugh. Yep. Ooh, and a lucky clover. Okay, I guess we take that. That's a really late lucky clover. Don't know how that got passed up. So I think we can just try, try to speculate now on green-white or green-blue, to be honest. Um, don't know why I passed up the charm sleep for a guy mutter, perhaps. And then I passed up another... Merfolk Secret Keeper for a Charm Sleep, but now with L Lucky Clover, it can be pretty busted um, with with these Merfolk Secret Keepers if we decide to stick with Green Blue, so let's take it here. Don't think it's Giant Opportunity. Hmm, just a Mer Moonlight Scavenger. Looks like a decent 6-drop we can take. I'm down for it. And now what? Um, nothing much. Maybe a Knight? Maybe a Scarecrow as a dumb blocker. Maybe another Appetite, which I don't mind. Now, Get Fairy Guy Mutter shows up to the front porch. It did wheel. Okay, now another Garen Break Squire. Okay, so we kind of have to decide in the third pack what color we're going to, or else we're not going to have enough playables. It seems that green, white, and also green and blue, white and blue are pretty open. Like, do I just move into blue, white, and abandon the green for the most part? It's possible, um, but we'll see. Ooh, and we did open the Feasting Troll King. Uh, we we're ready in green. Seems like a pretty solid pickup. We do need some ramp and some mana fixing to get this going, but I think it's too 
powerful to to say no to, to not to say uh, no to. There's also him nice sprite as an excellent um, card as well. Decent two for one counter spell, put out two one body, but can't say no to feasting troll king. And a Bognati, but Black has... I think the ship on Black has sailed um, for the most part, so don't think I'm taking it here. Anything in White? Not really. There's a Resolute Rider, I guess. I um, guess we can just take maybe an, an Opt as a decent blue card. Just go blue-green. Yeah, let's try it out. Okay, now we have blue-white. Green-white being open. With the Okame Ranger, there's a trapped in tower. Um, damn it. Uh, yeah, this is this draft is not going exactly according to plan. Or we can just take a green card, keep ourselves in green blue or something. Like how many green? Like we did pick up a bunch of blue cards, for example. Like if we just move our blue, what happens? Um, then I mean, then we're kind of lacking a lot of playables. How many cards do we need to pick up again to get there? Let's see. Do we have any? Like, I mean, we're. I guess we're almost there. I guess, but it's still a lot of work. Like, we do need um, six more playables, perhaps. We have like zero removal. So yeah, I guess maybe we just go green blue. Screw it. Um, why is this Merfolk Secret Keeper doing? Um, simply because we don't have enough playables in that color and and removal, so and but in blue we do have like charm sleeps and uh, and adventure some rare folks secret keepers for adventure synergy. So let's just zoom out here. Yeah, let's just move the blue since we took two removal spells and we do need removal. Um, Otherwise, we're just gonna—we're not gonna get there in terms of playables, and we're just gonna get run over and killed. So yeah, um, I think we're just gonna go blue-green. Therefore, I think the uh, tree folk makes sense. Um, now what? Guess another opt. Don't hate it. Well, now the blue-green is employing. I guess there's a sporecraft spider as a decent blocker on three. Um. Now what? Maybe do we? I guess we still have some draw spells with the Steel Gaze Griffin that can gain that can probably fly over and do some damage. We are, we do look stacked near the top end, so maybe we don't need to take it. Um, maybe just a Carver as a filler four drop. Don't hate it. Uh, Runway Together seems pretty solid. Um, maybe I can just. Get back a spell. It didn't say please, perhaps, with the land. Or stolen by Faye. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Guess Carver gets in. Alright, so this draft was a little bit strange, but uh, we got there. Um, happy to try this deck out. Um, possible that we should have been green-white, but we, we took too many powerful blue cards to say to... Um, to play, so we didn't get any payoffs for green blue, unfortunately, like Merrileaf Pixies or um, the uh, the Thunder Snapper. But um, I think this is decent. Um, do you like the Golden Egg? I think we can just maybe just cut the Merfolk Secret Keeper, perhaps. Like we're not looking to win by mill, to be honest. And like the Lucky Clover to Gambrick Carver seems pretty decent to punch in four damage. Um, but overall, yeah. Uh, not really amazing. The Lucky Clover Tree Folk seems pretty nice. So yeah, I think we're just going to try this deck out. Um, yeah, two drops look decent. Uh, still have, by a phase of late game card. So we just need to stall out and hopefully get to a late game to cast our big bombs and everything so we can win. Feasting Troll King is going to require a lot of green mana. So um, let's see here. I think we can keep it like maybe 9-8 perhaps. Like we do need double blue for Charm Sleep, for Didn't Say Pleased, for Tome Raider. And we, we, I think we can get to 4 green that um, this can be fine. So yeah, let's try this out. Alright, let's go.
this draft wasn't that straightforward, but given that we took so much removal in blue, there was no way that I don't think we we for, forgo it. Alright, uh, I think this is fine. I do need some creatures, but uh, I think I think with a two drop this is okay. Let's try this. Alright, we got our troll king, so we need to start putting out that green mana. Stolen by Faye looks pretty decent. Okay, uh, first time I've ever seen a blue-white player in draft, believe it or not. They tend not to um, come together too often, but let's just say go. Don't mind attack here, I may just take one. It's not that big of a deal, gain a bit of life. Hmm. Now what? Shambling suits? Hmm. Right? Seems like a pretty decent creature to bounce back once I have the lands for it. And we're kind of flooding out. Hmm. Maybe I just play the Carver. Can be fine. Stolen by Fae bounce. Hushbringer doesn't seem too great. Yeah, I'm down trading it. I don't mind. Maybe just a nice blocker for the Shambling suit. Like a 4-man 3-2 is pretty bad, but regardless... um. It helps block the 1-3 for a moment, for the time being. Let me read this. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying doesn't cause abilities to trigger. Okay. Don't know if the opponent missed a land drop there. He could have counter spell up, so I'm just going to be a little bit suspicious. Um, but I'm just going to offer an attack here. See what happens. Opponent's going to take it. Also, I'm just gonna op here. I don't really think I want to play out my um, didn't say please seems pretty solid, and I can keep up the counter spell for that for next turn. Yep, let's just say go. Rally for the throne. Should I counter that? How scary is that? Um, they don't really have any life link. I think I can. I think I can let this resolve. I'll be taking a beating for now, but that should be okay. I should stabilize in a couple of turns. Pony is probably just going to pass his turn with Counterspell Man up. Seems likely. Okay. Mm. I could just bounce back, but nah, I think it's fine. A Squire looks pretty decent with the, along with the Counterspell. I think I'm down for it. And I guess we can say go. I don't think I'm attacking here. Could another fl flash instant speed trick end of turn. Maybe another rally for, thr for the throne. I know I sacrificed the golden egg to make green mana. I'm fine taking one here. Try leaving up Counterspell? I, I don't understand why how he can spend his whole turn not playing anything. I think he's playing around my Counterspell, perhaps. Ooh, Treefoot looks nice. Do I just play out the um, ability here? Also, just maybe I just attack with the 3-2 first. Uh, yeah, maybe just let the damage happen. Like, I could try to bounce it back, bounce one of them back, but... Maybe I should. Um, seems pretty decent, actually. Yeah, let's try that. And he can probably try to counter this, and I can counter him back.
run away together. I don't mind that, actually. Yeah, let that resolve. And then what happens... I guess I can just replay the Bar Gram Gambrick Squire. Seems pretty solid. So go. A lot of mind games going on. Sir Eleonora, okay. Looks like a decent spell to bounce back if I have the mana for it. Um, he's just hoping that I wouldn't counter it when I play it. Okay. Hmm, now what? X equals 4 doesn't bounce this. I guess I can play the Feasting Troll King. Seems pretty solid here. Or I can Tree Folk and play a Insatiable Appetite in attack. Hmm. He probably knows about the Garen Break Carver, so he's probably not going to attack. I think I'm just going to cast a Feasting Troll King here. Actually, let me redo that. Yep, then we cast a Feasting Troll King. Oh, I can't ca create food tokens? Jeez, I forgot about the uh, Hushbringer. Oh, man. Jeez. Oh, well. Well, at least it's a 7-6 Trampler. He could just lock this down with, like, a removal spell. Jeez, that Hushbringer really um, prevented those foods from being made. But a 7-6 Trampler is scary, regardless, so I think I'm just start attacking with this. He doesn't seem to have an answer, otherwise he would just use it immediately, so... Let's think here. Hmm, I do like the Tree Folk on the... And that's still enough mana for a counter spell, so. Attacking with 9 9 Trampler. 9 8 Trampler is something that opponents should be scared of. I have Insatiable Appetite as a way to blow them out. Yeah, he has a quad block here. Feels bad because I'm about to blow them out. Um, yeah, let's kill this carriage first, then Sir, Sir Eleonora. Let's blow him out with the Insatiable Appetite. He could have Counterspell. But here, just a total blowout. Even though I didn't get the food, so... Forgot that this didn't cause this to trigger, but... Happy of a 9-8 Trample Vigilance body. He also forgot about the Carver that I could have pumped it, so... I think we're just gonna move to combat. Opponent has to take it. Maybe just play out the 2-drop, leave up mana for counterspell. He probably knows I have Counterspell. But one one attacking me in the air with lifelink is... One two attacking me in the air with lifelink isn't too scary. Now I have a way to block that flyer. Um, but for the most part, let's move to Dan Let's start attacking. I think I'll attack with everything here. Don't care if I trade off for like a 1-1 one -one token. Into the story. Yeah, I think I'll counter that. It's way too much, man. It's way too much uh, card draw. Okay, so Feasting Troll King is definitely a bomb. 
happy that I included it in the deck and I'm happy that I'm playing it. So sweet. Got our first win. Weird Simic. I think it's just Weird Simic is the name. Okay, um, I guess I can opt, turn one, try to find something. Let's try this out. With a Feasting Throw, Troking, I think we can get there. Uh, play land, say go. Like, we do need some land, so maybe I might just keep land on top. Ginger Brutes, sure. Maybe we can go, go blocker, so he will have to start paying one mana every turn to just... Ooh, Innkeeper, count me in. Although, I don't think we have much synergy with the Innkeeper. I'm going to play it out regardless. Uh, we do have the Carvers as ways to draw cards with it. But other than that, I don't think we have much. Because our draft went was pretty strange, to be honest. There was too many lonesome unicorns, but I didn't want to play any... I don't want to play a 5-man 3-3 Vigilance. Okay, my adversary is annoying. I guess we can try to bounce that back to save some time. Oh, jeez. I shouldn't have played it. I guess it gives a discount with the edge wall innkeeper now as a two drop. So I need to find a way to answer this. No blocks. Ooh, Merrileaf Rider can probably trade into it. I think I'm down for that. Unless he has removal, that would suck, but he would need like four four green sources for the um for the um the adamant, the um forgot the name, out muscle. But for now I, at least I have this three one to block this two three. And if he deals with three one and tax in that would suck, he would just go up a card. Alright, um I have the two for one myself, and I think I just will. Just to prevent this card draw and um this from getting through. So yeah, I think I have to do it as much as I hate it. It's a two for one anyways, but he didn't go up a card. So, um, yeah, hopefully in two more turns I can get this Feasting Troll King and win the game. I do have Runaway to get her up, but I do need a creature on the battlefield before it becomes... You can be utilized. Okay, Red Cap Melee is... Raging Red Cap sucks against me. Okay, I can get there. Uh, just one more turn, please. I just have to survive. He's probably just going to equip this Rose Thorn Halberd on it. But that's fine. Once I drop the Feasting Troll Gang, I can revive it if he decides to kill it. It also has 7-6 Vigilance, so... Probably to take some hits here, but um, I can stabilize. Next turn. Oh, he doesn't equip? Okay, sure. I'll just take three. Uh, I don't think he need Punt would need double blue for Counterspell. But luckily, my Feasting Troll King will just get into the battlefield now and uh, become quite a nuisance for this opponent. He could have bounced, but that's fine. He's just going to give me more food tokens. Um, he's not really getting much anywhere. And I can bounce back this ra Raging Red Cap next turn. J 
Junior Brute. Okay, I guess he's just going to try to race me now by just making a bunch of unblockables. It's fine. I can start gaining life with the food tokens. Um... I might just end up bouncing a Ginger Brew, to be honest. Um, got Carver up. Mm. Let's attack. And I like the move with Scavengers, and what do I bounce back? Hmm. I think I bounced back to Ginger Brutes, so he just needs to replay it again. Because, like, I don't think the Raging Red Cat really matters. This would, like, make him use up his whole turn to bounce them back. And to make them unblockable and attack. And maybe I'm fine attacking with the Moonlit Scavengers next turn. He could just chump block with the 1-2. Because if I bounce the Raging Red Cap, he's just going to equip it next turn for 5 mana onto a Ginger Brute. And that's going to be quite annoying. Well, the, well, the Paladin's pretty annoying. But I can think I think I can still get there. Hmm. I think I'm still attacking with both. I don't mind using a combat trick against a 5-5. Five five. He's probably going to smell it anyways and try to block with it. But if he doesn't block, it's pretty much game over here. Um, I'm fine with that. So that's 7, and this is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So yeah, I think it's lethal. Yeah, Feasting Troll King is busted. Jeez. I, I don't think I would win this game without it, to be honest. So this is definitely an MVP. Pick one, pack one. Yep, two wins. Let's go. Alright, uh, Garen Briggs Squires on 2, Tome Raider on 3, yep, this seems good. Uh, Ginger Brute on 1, we'll see. No Ginger Brute, I think I'm just going to lead with the um, Merrill Leaf Rider, just because it's 3 power, and I would like to punch in 3 power ASAP, so let's do that. And maybe he doesn't have any creatures to block with, I can easily just attack. I guess he's going to... Trade the Flaxen Intruder. Hmm. Seems pretty interesting here. Maybe I don't attack with it. Hmm. Because I don't really want to trade a 3 1 to a 1 2. I think he's just putting this up as a blocker. Maybe just Edgewall Innkeeper and Squire. Just try to push in 2 next turn. She can be fine. Savvy Hunter is annoying. I guess I can now Golden Egg trade this off. Which I don't mind. I think I'm just going to do that. Put 
opponent's gonna get a food, but I still need to get this off the battlefield, so I'm happy that he's blocking it. And Gunbrick Squire can come down. Okay, um, well, the Sporkhouse Spire is being a bit problematic. But I can appetite my way through it, and I don't mind doing that. Let's go. Definitely putting the Spore Cap Spider first, and then we're just gonna punch through, get rid of this. Trading card for card right now. Sure. Well, 2-3 is now pretty annoying. Yeah, just gonna play the Tomb Raider. Get lands. Ooh, well, our big boy is here. Hopefully he doesn't uh, use the Reaper of Night on us. That would be pretty unfortunate. Okay, Fierce Witch Stalker is fine. I think I definitely want to get my... Ooh, okay. Um, well, Feasting Cro Troll King comes and s saves the day again. Definitely a busted card. Um, I, don't mind, I don't mind trading both these cards off just to, um, just to get this back next turn. Tree Folk, okay. I think I'm fine attacking here with feasting and the, the air creature. And I'll just sacrifice it next turn um, to get this turn to get back. Yep, and we'll just get back. Without any mana cost, pretty busted card to be honest. Uh, now have I have thought didn't say please to take out any removal spells that the opponent might have, and he should have some given that he's in black. So yep, just gonna attack here. What if I attack with all? Hmm, he blocks two. Nah, I think I just want to keep eight damage for now. Could have a combat trick. Could have just bake into the pie. Well, he doesn't have it. Okay. Well, that's great. I have Counterspell Man up to um, deal with whatever he tries to play to block this or to trade off next turn. He could just sacrifice food, get some life gain going. If he's playing out the Tree Folk next turn, definitely countering it. Just so I can punch in as much damage as possible. Okay, well, too bad. Yep, Feast and Troll King does it again. I think the deck, opponent's deck was definitely more stronger than mine, but luckily I had that um, didn't say please in my hand to counter his own Feast and Troll King. So let's change the portrait picture of this deck. Yeah, this guy's definitely the MVP. He's a pretty dumb card. So yep.
mm, seems fine with Merrileaf Rider on two, and I can I can draw off the Golden Egg to uh, get whatever I need, and I have a way to opt and get my cards. So yeah, seems pretty solid. Clones in black, of course. All right, um, Orzov Knights. Ooh, with Lucky Clover, that's scary. But we have our own Lucky Clover. Hmm. Then we're just going to run out the Merrileaf Rider first. He could have Falmir Knight with this Lucky Clover, and that would be pretty disgusting. The fact he will be able to um, draw two cards off of it. Worthy Knight's pretty busted. Um, I think I'm just going to trade that off, I think. I mean, I can do it next turn, to be honest, and he can still... Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Do I just trade it off with the Golden Egg? Perhaps. You see, he, he definitely has knights, to be honest, but... I really don't want to gain a bunch of value, a bunch of 1-1s. That can be pre prom max. So yeah, I think I'm just going to do it. I think it's worth it. Because other than that, what our targets does this have? For some trade. And it's nice that the um, golden egg replaces itself. Um... Because I don't really want to trade into any 1-1s one that he has. I could just attack for 3, but I think it's worth just getting rid of this Worthy Knight ASAP. I think it's a pretty busted card if you can totally get off. Well, Memory Theft is annoying. He's definitely going to take away my Lucky Clover now. Goodbye, Lucky Clover. And now he knows a Garam Brig Carver is in hand, so he's going to... Um... Oh, he takes away the Carver? Interesting. Right, well, now we have Tome Raider, which is pretty nice. I'm going to play that out. And a Stolen by the Fae. Alright, I just need my second blue mana, and this will be pretty busted. I can win through the air. Jousting Dummy, sure. Alright, um, just need my second blue mana, I guess. I can always opt for something, we'll see. Mystic Sanctuary, hmm. Guess it's not the worst thing. Yeah, I'll draw it. Uh, maybe I'm fine have trading this off. I'm not trading one for two. Even though this is flying, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, definitely blocking here. He can use a pump trick. Sure. Well, at least that got away. Um, even though he pumped it a million times, at least that... Oh, well, I mean, he buffed it. I guess... I mean, it still got out of the way, so I'm happy for this. Um, Squire looks pretty decent. I can I can stone him for the Fey and um, for two, but I don't think it's worth it. Uh, I think I'm just going to play this to go. Because he has bigger cards out there, and I'd rather just bounce bigger cards, to be honest. Like, this Archon looks pretty solid to bounce back. X equals 4. Um, don't think I'm trading blocking here. Right. Um, yeah, let's just do it now. Still don't have any good good attacks until I can get rid of his Archon. But I'm still buying some time. I might just trade off the 1-1 for the 2-1, to be honest. If he decides to attack with it. And we're pretty much flooding out at this point. Is there any reason I should play a land? Probably not. He could just use Harvest Fear or something. Um, I mean, I would need a little more lands to attack. I think I want, I'm fine attacking the 2-2, two -two, to be honest. Offering to trade for any one of these cards. Sure. Just need my Feasting Troll King and some Counterspell mana up. I might just keep these two forces in hand to again play around, um, play to play around removal. 
I do need a way to deal with this Locked Wayne Paladin, otherwise I'm going to be in big trouble. Um, I can easily trade into this 4-2-2-1 two, and two, one if he offers it. Ooh, Gambrake Carver can be nice. Nice way to uh, pump this twice. I still need to double block with it though. But I think I'll, I think I can try to set up something. Hmm. Sure. And say go. He could have a removal spell maybe for this one one that I'm trying to set up with the Okay, one or more commander is annoying. How am I supposed to deal with this? He does have one knight. I think I have to take four per turn with this. Hopefully I can find a charm sleep to deal with this four three. Alright. Let's do this. He could have baked into a pie, but I, I'm not. I'm definitely not gonna play around it. I need to get rid of this three two, so I don't have to pay every turn. To um, yeah, he has baked into a pie. Yep. Ooh, I'll flank. Okay, never mind. But still, now my spell, the, the adventure spell, fades. Doesn't resolve. Ooh, I can still pump. Mm. Ooh, and I can untap as well. Seems pretty decent. Yeah, why not? Oh, it doesn't untap. Oh, sorry. I, oh, I, that was a Silver Flame Squire. My bad. So yeah, I guess I need to keep up some defense. Though. Ooh, Feasting Troll King seems excellent. Let's play it out here. This is definitely a bomb. Let's play those lands. I'm fine double blocking if he does. So yeah, this card is total MVP. Um... Jeez, he just needs trapped in a tower, I guess, to take this out. But, um... Yeah, definitely a scary card for the opponent to deal with. Alright. Yeah, it doesn't have any good attacks. Opponent's just gonna say go. I think I'm just gonna. Not gonna do anything here. Um, just wait until I find like a charm sleep or something. Like I could attack, sacrifice it, bring it back, but I'm not doing it in front of a death toucher. I think I'm just gonna say go. Could I bake into a pie? That would suck. Sure. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna take a bunch of damage next turn. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So yeah, probably, probably need to sacrifice a food. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Still eleven damage. He's still one off, I guess. You can try to pump, and I'll just sacrifice some food. Yeah. So how much is this? Six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So I do need to sacrifice two foods. I might as well sacrifice the final one because I don't think I'm using it to save the Feasting Troll King anymore. But the fact that this stays... Jeez, that it... How did it get indestructible? Yeah, I guess I'm sacrificing. 
The Lucky Clover really won the game here. Ooh, Moonlit Scavengers. Don't mind if I do. And what do I bounce back? Looks the Paladin looks like a fine target to bounce. Then we can place a land. Attack with the Feasting Troll King. Pay one with it. Get him for seven. Ooh, he's gonna absorb some damage. Sure, I'm fine with the free card. Forever young, okay. Well, uh, I still have one blocker up if he decides to tap all four creatures down. I can easily just block out the Death Toucher. So I don't know if this is correct by the opponent. Um, I mean, he could just play another Silver Flame Squire as a way to block next turn, but it's definitely not lethal, so. Sure. And I can just happily take five, which I don't mind. Don't know why he's doing that. Um, yeah, let's do this. Ooh, and that could just be lethal. Seven. Yeah, I think this is lethal. Well, Feasting Troll King and Insatiable Appetite does it again. Definitely a busted card. I think the opponent made some misplays. Um, don't think he should have um, attacked all out last turn. Um, but, whatever. You know, can't really uh, be an opponent with Feasting Troll King exactly on six. He, he almost got there though, but uh, it was really close. So, um, hmm. Yeah, uh, I think this is just going to be part one of the video. Um, I'm going to upload part two later. See you guys.